Rose pruning is something that we find ourselves needing to do on landscape roses. And there are several kinds of roses. In this training video, we'll look at pruning techniques for three of them. Hybrid tea or cut roses, rambling or climbing roses, and shrub roses. And there are several others, and most of the concepts and principles apply to them as well. Here's a tea rose or a cut fly rose and how it's been cut back heavily for uh, purposes of selling them. So this is one pruning technique that you might have for roses where you cut them back very heavily in late winter and then package them to sell or cut them back heavily for the purpose of growing a lots of extra nice shoots. In areas where it gets very cold, you may cut them back heavily and mulch them and then bring the mulch away from them early spring and then allow them to grow from that standpoint. Pruning a knockout rose during the summer, you're basically just removing uh, dead flowers or spent flowers and any damaged or dead branches that might have occurred throughout the uh, spring or into the early summer. And so this is kind of a, a summer process. We're not really a thinning nor uh, heading back, but we're just nipping out those dead flowers that are already spent. And the reason that I'm doing that, so I'm actually cutting back again, as I indicated earlier, I'm cutting back to flower. Uh, bud or to a, um, a leaf that with five leaflets and in doing so I'm going to force new flower buds to occur back underneath that particular section of the plant. So you notice these three dead flowers there, those spent flowers, and you notice this new growth here with five leaflets. So I'm going back and carefully making sure I don't cut the leaflet and cutting those back in such a way that I can uh, get additional flowers. So anytime we deadhead a rose by taking out some of these dead um, and spent flowers, we're actually allowing it to, and encouraging it to put in on uh, new flower buds and new flowers. So if you're interested in something like a, a knockout rose or some of the other shrub roses and wanting it to flower more in throughout the summer, then you'll want to go in and deadhead it and remove some of those uh, spent flowers. And in doing so, you may find some dead twigs here and there that need to be come, come out, or you may want to shape the plant in a little bit of a fashion to where it's a little more uh, neat in its form. This one has kind of got out of balance and so I'm looking at a at a tall branch there that would help balance it out if I remove that and maybe another dead twig or two in there. So pruning is not only a science but sometimes it can become an art where you want to shape a plant and make it look nice just based on what your um, finding is, is accurate. Oftentimes roses, we want to let them go free form, more natural, but sometimes you want to sort of bring them back in if you've got some extra flowers or extra stems that are uh, trying to go in areas that you're really not interested in them going. Climbing or trailing roses are roses that need to be pruned many times during the uh, year, during this growing season. And this particular one is an heirloom uh, antique rose, if you will, that's been in my family for at least three generations. And it oftentimes needs to be pruned up until early in July. After that, we tend to discourage pruning as we want those um, branches that may occur later to um, to actually harden off before we get a hard freeze. So I'm going to look at pruning this rose and we will be taking out some of those tall uh, extra shoots at the top. 
Typically, a trailing rose is one we put on a trellis or a arbor or perhaps on a fence. And this is on a arbor, a little um, trellis-like device that we're using here in a little pathway. And I'm going to be using this pair of uh, Felco hand pruners as this material is fairly soft and, and very small, so it's not going to be very d difficult to prune out. And you're going to notice as I go in that I'm actually trying to prune out some of those back to the primary cane. And in doing so, I actually am bringing those pieces out and removing them. And here's one with a flower on it, and I'm not going to prune out the flower, but I'm going to take out the extra cane beside it. In some cases, I may go in and actually prune out dead tissue, as oftentimes we'll have some dieback that may be occurring. And some of that may be done in the spring before it breaks dormancy as well. In every case that we make a prune, we want to prune it back to a node. In many cases with roses, pruning back to the node, we start looking at the leaves. And you'll notice some leaves have three leaflets and some have five. Anytime you prune a rose back to five leaflets, that's a better chance that the new growth are actually going to produce new flowers. If, in fact, it's a rose that produces new flowers in the same growing season. So some roses do not. Some roses only bloom one time during the growing season. So there are a lot of new canes up in the top of this rose, and I'm pruning back some of those new canes. And so I'm up on a ladder doing that and uh, carefully making sure that I'm stable, but also that I managed to get some uh, accurate cuts on each of these canes. So I'm trying to prune back the excess on top of this, this rose. Typically when you're pruning back long, tall canes or long branches on a plant, as I'm doing here, we refer to that as heading back. There's another short video on the concept of heading back and thinning that's used primarily on deciduous trees and shrubs. But this case is we're actually heading back the tall canes on a, a rose. So again, heading back, we're taking that tall cane, if you will, and bring it back to a, a node, to another leaf there, and it actually will force branching, and oftentimes branching not only at that location, but further down on the plant itself. So you see lots of those canes needed to be headed back and they will be in a few minutes as we proceed in pruning this rose.